Okay, folks, we're back. How are we all doing? Uh, uh, all right, I'm okay. going to share my, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. And um, uh, I was just cleaning this up during the break. I'm going to change, I was changing mm -hmm. this so that I could actually see the three sizes because the browser would notice and get that small. So um, about 550 pixels, and this would be 551 to how about 700 and this would be 701. So I changed the breakpoints so I could see all three sizes. So this is anything that's up to 550 pixels. So now I can see that size on the screen. Uh, 551 to 700 and then 701 up. So that's what, how these three sections look. I'm gonna save that and um, let me, uh, Reload this page. Okay. So now, at some point here, the breakpoint changes right there, and then it will change to the smaller one. Yay! I can see the small size now. So now we see the small, medium, large. All right. Okay. So that's actually um, pretty powerful stuff, um, and it's very easy to um, to use this code. So I've done part of the exercise. And that is that I've set three breakpoints and three different background images, three different sizes at the different sizes. And I've told it not to repeat and to center. So now, by the way, um, is there anything, let me pull this all up so we can see it a little better. Okay, so we see our three breakpoint sections. Um, since this is the same and this is the same and this is the same, I didn't really need to repeat that. Uh, I didn't need to put that in there three times, did I? No, I didn't. So what I could do to make this easier is I could take that out of there and just stick it at the beginning of the style sheet before we get to the, um, oops, oops, I lost my, uh, I lost my background. Okay. Um, lost my selector and everything. I'm going to mute somebody here. Okay. Sorry, I muted you guys. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see here. Um, oh yeah, I need my selector body. All right, so I can pull these guys out of the sections they're in. All right, that's a little cleaner. Um, because if I style sheet starts here and it says, these rules for the body, um, then I don't need to repeat them because they're gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna change. They're gonna stay the same for all these three different sizes, unless I put something in one of these sizes to overrule that. So the style sheet will work a little better that way. Okay, so now um, uh, there was a was there a question? Somebody want to ask a question during the break? I mean after the break. Relating to the the problem you're uh, having, uh, yeah, I wasn't able to get my picture to uh, pop up. I don't know if I was doing something wrong or. Uh, okay, can you share your screen? Yeah. Uh, Let me stop. Ways, yeah. Let me stop sharing mine. Share your screen and let's see your your uh, stuff. There you go. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So the image isn't showing up? Yeah, the image isn't showing up. But, uh. Is it validate? Well, this is off of uh, my own. Oh, uh, oh you're, not on, you're not online. OK. Yeah. Let me just take a look at this real fast. Um, so the most, OK, so do you have an images folder that you're pointing to from this fold, from this document? Yeah, it's right here. And let me see what's inside. 
Wait, I didn't see a DP small. Wait. Yeah. Mm. No, I mean in the folder. Where's DP? Oh, DP small. DP. Okay, so those are right. See what we got here. Well, um, by the way, you want to change your breakpoint numbers because you have 401, 401 here, by the way. Yeah. Um, For now. So you, you know these don't work, these the way you've got these numbers. Oh, these right here? Well, right here, you're saying max 500. So then you here, this should start oh, at 501. Because you're going oh, up this. to 500 on the top line. Oh, so, so this one would be 501? Yeah, because uh, you're already you're already going up to 500 on the one before it. And then that would be six. Yeah, that will work. Now, you don't need the max at the end of 701. That means that after 701, you're not going to see any image. Okay, so I'll just get rid of this part. Yeah, and get rid of the end too. Okay, stop there. Now, um, oh wait, you're missing an open <laughs> curly brace um, in that middle line. You see, see I'm in front of the end? Oh wait, wait, no, I'm sorry, you have it after the end. You got it, I didn't see it. All right, it's there. All right, try that. Let me just see what happens. Save the end. Okay, there it goes. And now if you change yeah, the probably... size, does the image change? you uh, bring the window in or out? Hmm. Doesn't look like it changes the size of it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Your breakpoints are kind of, um, how big is that image itself? It's, it's on the big side. It might be on the, I did, 350. Okay. But I know the biggest one is like six something. This one's 350 and this one was 250. Can you make it smaller, the window? Oh, this? Yeah, go all the way in. And it's not changing. Okay, oh. so there's a, there's a, oh, yeah, it is. okay, it is working. Oh. Okay, I just, I can't tell the way the screen's jumping around when you save it. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so it's working. Okay. All right, cool. It's probably because of the image sizes that I have it set for. Yeah, you can be, play uh, with that. You can play with that, but then you've got the general concept working. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Um, other questions? That was good. Thank you. That was good. Other questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, just about the when you, and I know you already explained this when you when you saved your Earth picture, um, but um, what what do you start with it generally as a large um, file and then. The formats you said uh, PNG or or uh, GIF. You could use GIF, uh, Ping, or JPEG. If it's a photograph, probably JPEG. Um, I'm working with an Adobe Illustrator file, all right? That I want to use. Oh, so you want to export that? Yeah, you want to. That needs to be saved as either a GIF, a JPEG, or a Ping. Um, okay. Is it like photograph like, or does it have gradients, or is it just pen and ink? Pen and ink, kind of, yeah. Why yeah, well then not? I would say um, uh, either a GIF or a, um, a ping, probably not a JPEG. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then maybe I just experiment with it and, and see how it looks and then resize it based on that or? Yeah, you could do that. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it depends on how big you make breakpoints as to how big you want your, you know, I mean, just, it doesn't have to be that big. So I would keep okay. it on the small size to keep it easy. Um, okay. I just did three little earths, you know, so. <laughs> and what was your I mean, the, the point is it shows you visually that you're seeing the breakpoint styles in action. So I want to see that. So I want to see the oh. three sizes. So when you make that window smaller, I want to see the, the, the background image change to the smaller size. That's all. Okay. All right. Um, so um, I, the last part of the exercise is just changing some other styles. So um, once you've got the background thing working, um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward at that point. So if we go back to the exercise, um,
vary at least five different styles for each breakpoint range. Okay, so um, based on the size of your port, which means just put more styles in each one of those sections. Um, I'll leave this up to you. I just want you to play with this part. So you could, um, uh, where's my screen share? Number is that? So essentially, this is what's left to do. Um, and you could, you could do this very simply or you could get more complicated to, depending on how, you know, how much work you want to put into it. <clears throat> so simply, you could just vary five styles of anything. You could uh, vary font, you could vary font sizes, you could vary some margins or um, colors of text or, um, I mean, you know, any, any styling changes that you want to make based on the, uh, the size. So whatever styles you put in here, and here, and here. So let's look at the structure of this for a second because this is going to trip you up perhaps. Um, let's move that down to keep this clear. So we see an open curly brace here and its closer is down here. So in other words, each CSS rule, like body background image, is going to have its own set of curly braces that are going to be um, left and right. So each rule is going to look like that. So you have to remember not to lose this last curly brace because that's actually the closer for the whole thing. So these two curly braces bracket the whole section of styles for the breakpoint. So that's the beginning one for the second breakpoint. That's the ending one. That's the beginning one for the third breakpoint. That's the ending one. It's really easy to just accidentally nick that off somewhere and lose one of the ending curly braces. It's really easy to do that, and it will completely blow the whole thing. You'll get all these validation errors and be like, what's going on? And so um, just always be aware that the curly braces left and right have to match. And if you have an odd number uh, of uh, left and right curly braces, you've got a problem. So um, just remember that that one there opens up and closes there. And if you want to rearrange the, the you know, put some more carriage turns in your code to make that clearer, you, know, you could do that, you know, I don't know. But that's used, the standard way you see it. What I used to do in uh, in C++ is I would add like something like uh, like a little arrow or something that tells me where the ending braces are. Yeah, because, it, it, you know, this stuff can get weird. Um, and, of course, you can always do CSS comments, which is slash star, blah, 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 blah star slash. And... Um, so uh, I could uh, vary some text in here. I could say um, uh, paragraphs are um, color red. Yeah, one. Color's easy. Um, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that in here. I paste that in here. And here I'm going to say color blue. And here I'm going to say color green. I don't know. I'm just, you know, play with it. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to go back and see if that works. Is this it? And so the text is green and the earth changes there and it changes there. Yeah. So um, now it's not just the background that's changing, but other things. So, so you can see how this can work. Um, in your mind, think the smallest size would be phone um, and the medium size, you know, could be tablet or uh, the larger size could be desktop. I mean, you know, experiment with the numbers. Uh, you've seen what I've done. I generally ballpark them. Um, the nice thing is that um, if you just ballpark it, it pretty much works in any browser or device just based on the size of the device. So, um, you might want to play with those numbers a little bit, and you might want to look at the uh, how to how to choose your breakpoints um, document that I linked to just for some samples. Um, questions? I've essentially covered the exercise, so um, I'm going to stop here on the exercise. I I also remember uh, I also wanted you to remember the selectors I introduced: the child selector, the adjacent sibling selector, 
and the descendant selector. Um, and each week we're going to be adding a few more selectors as well. Question? I have a question. Yes. So when you're thinking about these different screens, phones and tablets and, and computers, or maybe even your TV, if you're maybe. browsing on something that big, well, that's what we used to do. The, I think the first television we bought was in 2008, and it was actually the desktop for an HP, but it was a very large monitor, but that's what we used. Um, when you're talking about the changes, like here, you're just changing the color of the text. Yeah, this is just to get you into right. the... But is there something actually practical Absolutely. that you want to change? Like Very. when you're looking at things on the little screen, is it better to have the text be bigger? Because I'm just saying for an example, because you're looking at something little. And so I just wondered if there's a common list of things you change when you get smaller and you're bigger. Well, I even think of a, of a tablet in portrait or landscape even. Well, think about um, when you're on a small device versus a large device, right? Mm -hmm. One of the most common things has to do with your navigation menu system. Simpler on the phone is better. People do these desktop layouts with, you know, 10, you know, 10 menu items on the top level horizontally and then sub menu items that break and fly out and everything. It's like, that doesn't really work on the phone. No. So you really have to rethink your navigation. So the first thing, navigation, mm -hmm. um, and there's something called the hamburger menu, which is an extremely common technique. Have you heard of that? No. Okay, let's, um, uh, let's go to a website that maybe uses it. Um, but I do like burgers. <laughs> um, let me just, I'll try Apple just for fun. I can't remember much about their site. They probably are more sophisticated than, than just using screen size. They're probably actually going to test for phones and things, but, um, let me just see if they use a hamburger menu. Yeah, there we go. Here's the typical hamburger menu. See this menu across the top? Mm -hmm. Mac, iPad, iPhone, blah, blah, blah. Now watch what happens as the screen gets smaller. They move closer together at first, right? And at a certain point, which is gonna be a break point. Oh, oh see that? There's a break point right there, right? See that? Mm -hmm. And the menu went away. And on the left, you see two lines. They're typically three lines. Mm -hmm. That's and there's a menu. Yeah, and, and Apple Apple's weird in doing the two lines. I guess they figure at this point they're going to make it even simpler. But the standard is three horizontal lines, which supposedly like looks like a hamburger when you're mm -hmm. looking at this, I guess. Uh, oh, I get it. Okay. Uh, yeah, like from the side view, you see like right. the bun and the bird. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's usually three lines. Let that's us call a hamburger. What is it? So, so this is a really common technique. Big because Mac. Yeah. If you're on a phone, right, you don't need that giant menu. Mm -hmm. But... You would tap here on the phone, and then there's your menu, right? So, and that is done with exactly the technique we just looked at. Like, there's a break mm -hmm. point right there, and at that break point, the menu actually disappears, mm -hmm. and it reappears under the hamburger. And um, But we all know to go look for that because it's, we're used to seeing it. Right. That's a convention. That's a web Generally. convention right now. Mm -hmm. And on the phone especially, you see a lot of these kinds of mm -hmm. menus, these drop-downs like that in the hamburger. Um, so, um, did I do, I think I've talked about the display property some weeks ago. Refresh my memory. Have we talked about the display property? Maybe. I don't remember, but I believe you. That to was make, before to make the things, virus. <laughs> to make things disappear and reappear? No? I don't think so. Uh, maybe I don't okay. think so. Maybe okay. Not. So, so, um, um, I'm not going to get into it tonight. We can do that later because I want to end this pretty soon. But there's a property called display, and there's also another CSS property called visibility. They both are similar. The display property is the one that's generally used. It's the most useful. But the CSS property display allows you to make something um, disappear. So you can say display none, and the menu will just go away. It's, it's so, let me explain. Here, I'll show you some code. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna add some text. Oh no, I do have text. Okay, here we go. In the medium size, 
See where it says paragraphs are blue? I'm going to change that. I'm going to say paragraphs are gone. Display none. So the display CSS property can take a value of none or block or inline or a couple of other things, but they're the most useful. Generally, when you say display none, what that says is paragraphs will not display. They just go away, right? So that's the first step in understanding how to do the hamburger menu is how to use the display property. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back here and reload. And I can't remember which breakpoint that is, but at one of these breakpoints, the paragraphs disappear. See that? They're just gone. They're gone right there. So that's not just a style. That's actually making content disappear. Um, now, so the way you would use this is you would have your menu. It will probably be a list item, a bunch of list items, right? Um, and that would be your navigation menu. And you could just say display none on your whole navigation menu and it disappears at a certain breakpoint. So you would generally do this at the small breakpoint, right? And then in its place, you have a drop down menu instead. And so basically you, um, you would have the code for both in the HTML and they would each have a class and you could say make one class disappear at this size make the other class disappear at the other size and so basically by choosing to hide one or the other you can make it appear as if content is appearing or disappearing as you change the size of the window and that's typically how you do a different navigation menu you simply just make one menu disappear and the other one appear does that make sense You're all muted. Should I um, unmute all? Can I do that? No, yeah, that makes, makes sense. My follow-up would be yeah. by, by display disappear, it is completely stricken from the layout. There's no, it's not Yes, gone. yeah. Now visibility, if you, you, can, you can say display none or visibility colon hidden. Display none means remove the content from the flow completely as if it's not there. Visibility colon hidden would simply render it not visible, but the layout wouldn't reflow. There would just be a hole there. And so that's the difference between the display property and the visibility property. So it's kind of interesting, um, depending on what you want to do. But generally, people use display none because they want to just remove it completely from the flow because they're going to have something else instead. And so it's going to reflow that way. Um, yeah, but yeah, so, so um, creative use of the display property um, with breakpoints is how you can make things seemingly go away or reappear. So you could literally have some paragraphs go away and some not, you know, like, so maybe you wanted, uh, there, there, there are different schools of thought on changing content based on device. Generally speaking, you don't, change content based on device. You change the way the content flows, such as the menu flows a different way, but you don't remove it completely. Um, it simply takes a different form. Now you could remove it completely, but then somebody on a phone would be like, what the fuck, I can't, I'm sorry, what the hell, I can't, I can't navigate this website. So um, uh, there were, back in the old days of just not too many years ago, there were some debates about whether or not you should dumb down sites for phones by actually removing some of the content to keep it simpler. But um, over time, that argument really became not so good uh, because with responsive web design techniques, you can simply um, reflow it in different ways so that you don't have to just make it go away. But before responsive design techniques were supported by all the browsers, now they are. But you know, this stuff is all changing very rapidly. And not too long ago, some web browsers didn't support all the CSS3 media queries. And so that, made it a little more of a debate in terms of how you deal with the phone content. Um, but these days that's that you just reflow it. Yeah. Wasn't there multiple sites being built? Like you said, the dumbed down ones for mobile site. When, when yeah. Gen and you can do that, but, and that's why you sometimes you're on a mobile site and it'll say click here to see the desktop site, you know, um, uh, or vice versa. But uh, it's just because you can reflow text and make it all flow in one long column, you know, that's, you know, rather than just, 
make the phone user not see some of the content. Um, you know, I mean, you, 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 I guess it depends on the site, what your content is and how important it is and, you know, how people use the site. And, you know, so, so I guess it's, there's not like a one size fits all, but in, you know, there, there'd be examples where you'd want to take stuff off, I guess. But generally speaking, you just reflow it. And so you don't give the person on the phone less content. But again, there, there may be situations where you, you change that, you change that wisdom. I don't know. Um, so more questions. So I think we're going to wrap up. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so uh, two questions, actually. Um, do you, do we need to create a, uh, an external style sheet for this or is it okay if we do the, um, uh, ah, well, um, since I don't remember what the exercise says, let me take a quick look. Um, I don't see it in there. I don't, if, see if it, it doesn't there. say, then it doesn't matter if I've, okay, if I'm okay. looking for something, I'll, I'll say it. So, um, it's just create a background media queries. Um, I don't say, um, so, um, that means you could do an internal or external style sheet. Uh, it also means you could do your media queries different ways too. Like I showed you a couple examples of different ways to do it. Um, this one here is a fairly standard way to do it. Um, and, um, actually, um, you know what, uh, if, we want well, if you want, I can, I can post this one to the chat window if you want this code as an example. Um, Please. <laughs> it's, on the, it's in the video, of course, but um, uh, this is testing. One other question now. is, do we need to provide the alt description? In any image? If it's a background image, no. If it's a foreground image, yes. Okay. But you notice here the images are backgrounds, and so that's a really good question. Um, Background images are considered styling and foreground images are considered content. So for the purpose of, uh, of this exercise, no, because they're all backgrounds. Okay. Now, if you put some foreground images, if you put some images on the page with the image tag, uh, IMG tag, then yeah, you, they always need alt. So the IMG tag always takes an alt attribute as well as a source attribute. But um, backgrounds are not content, so there's no alt attribute, no alt text with backgrounds. Uh, kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, let's yeah. see if I can, let me upload this, uh, uh, where's my chat window? Am I sharing my screen? Yes, I am. All right. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to stop sharing so that I get my sanity back. There it is. Okay. And where's the chat window? Here it is. All right. <coughs> chat window disappeared. There it is, floating palette. Okay, uh, it must be hidden because it's not letting me upload it. Um, for those of us without Photoshop, is there an easy way to resize images then? Um, uh, what software do you have? Do you have any graphic software at all? I probably do, um, and I'll, obviously there's a bunch of free ones online. I can yeah, you Mac or Windows? Ah, uh, Windows. Yeah, there's. A, um, I'm not as familiar with the Windows stuff, but there's a. If you you could find some free Windows apps to do very basic um, image editing, like resize. Yeah, I think I think there's a paint one on here. Uh, yeah, I think something even comes with Windows. It'll let you simply resize an image. Okay. So all I'm asking you to do here is resize it. Now it says optimize them for the web. So um, to the degree that you can do that in that software, just do that. But this exercise okay. is really just about understanding how breakpoints work um, All right. and getting experience with changing breakpoints. Um, I'm trying to, it will not let me. Okay. I'll let you share the file. Well, and I click on the file button, it beeps, which means that it's probably got a window. I've got so many things open here on my desktop. And, uh, yeah, because I clicked on the file thing and it showed up a little window for me. Yeah, and it normally does. So. Um, let me start closing some windows. Find out why it's not letting me see it. <clears throat> hmm. Well, unfortunately, I have to head out, guys. I will talk to you guys later. Later, bro. Yeah, Over next for week. some reason, I, it won't let me. Um, <clears throat> it will not Oops. let me upload this darn thing. Okay. Try it one more time.
Thanks, John, for the help, by the way. Okay, um, but um, I'll get this video up tonight. And um, am I still am I sharing or not? I can't see. No, no, no. no. You're oh. still recording. Okay, great. Well then, um, folks, I'm gonna <clears throat> stop the recording. Uh, we're, and I'll stay on for another minute. But um, let me just stop the recording for those folks at home who don't need to listen to the rest of this banter. Okay.